Another day, another Trump story. Trump pleads not guilty after arrest, arraignment in hush money case. Donald Trump pleaded not guilty Tuesday to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records related to his alleged role in hush money payments toward the end of his 2016 presidential campaign, the first time a former president has had to plead to criminal charges. The indictment was unsealed in a proceeding before Judge Juan Merchant in criminal court in Manhattan. Trump was flanked by his lawyers inside the courtroom as prosecutors outlined their case against him, alleging he made covert and illegal payments in order to impact the 2016 election. He faces a maximum of four years in prison if convicted. Asked for his plea, Trump answered, not guilty. Prosecutor Chris Conroy told the court that Trump engaged in an illegal conspiracy to aid his campaign and undermine the election. The statement of facts compiled by prosecutors in conjunction with the indictment said Trump repeatedly and fraudulently falsified New York business records to conceal criminal conduct that hid damaging information from the voting public during the 2016 presidential election. It outlined three individuals who received hush money payments. Adult film star Stormy Daniels, Playboy model Karen McDougal, and a former Trump Tower doorman who'd claimed to have a story about a child Trump had out of wedlock. Daniels was paid $130,000 by former Trump lawyer Michael Cohen while McDougal and the doorman were paid $150,000 and $30,000 respectively by AMI, the publishers of the National Enquirer. The Enquirer later concluded that the doorman's story was not true and wanted to release the doorman from the agreement, but held off on doing so until after the election at the request of Trump lawyer Michael Cohen, prosecutors said. The court filing said Trump thanked AMI CEO David Pecker for his help by inviting him to dinner at the White House in the summer of 2017. The indictment said the falsified records Trump signed off on were all made in 2017, when he was president. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg told reporters the false statements were made to cover up other crimes including violations of New York election law and federal campaign finance limits. This time, unlike his bankrupted casinos or failed marriages, many of Trump's supporters and detractors argue that the fate of American democracy is hanging in the balance as the former president increasingly conflates any legal woes as an effort to illegitimately deny him a return to power. Conroy also told the judge they were very concerned about Trump's inflammatory social media posts about Bragg, other prosecutors and the judge, saying they could have an impact on potential effects on jurors and witnesses. Trump attorney Todd Blanche told the judge his client is upset and was simply exercising his First Amendment rights. The judge warned both sides against escalating their rhetoric, but did not issue any type of gag order. Please refrain from making statements that would incite violence or civil unrest, Merchant said. Trump arrived at the courthouse at 100 Center Saint in Lower Manhattan in a presidential-style motorcade from Trump Tower in Midtown, where he'd stayed overnight. He was informed he was under arrest, fingerprinted, and processed ahead of his arraignment. Seems so surreal while wow, they're going to arrest me. Can't believe this is happening in America. He said in a post on his social media platform Truth Social that published as he was arriving at the courthouse. With the failures of January 6th U.S. Capitol riots still fresh in officials' minds, 
Security was high in the courthouse and nearby areas as the police department, court officers and Secret Service braced for protests amid the unprecedented arraignment of a former president. With a media circus outside, Trump was escorted out of the courthouse and back into his car afterward. He flew back to his Florida home on his private jet immediately after the hearing. He was expected to address the charges and remarks from his Mar-a-Lago estate Tuesday night. In a statement, Bragg said his office alleges Trump repeatedly and fraudulently falsified New York business records to conceal crimes that hid damaging information from the voting public during the 2016 presidential election. Trump last month called for protests in the event of his arrest, and he later ratcheted up his rhetoric, warning of potential death and destruction if he was charged. He continued to post overnight on Truth Social, leveling criticism at the prosecutor. If he wants to really clean up his reputation, he will do the honorable thing and, as district attorney, indict himself. Trump said of Bragg, a Democrat, whom he accused of leaking details of the indictment to the media. Trump, 76, has also used the indictment to raise money for his 2024 campaign, which announced Monday evening that it had raised $7 million since a grand jury voted to indict him last Thursday. Hundreds of pro- and anti-Trump demonstrators gathered in a small park across from the courthouse ahead of his scheduled appearance, including reps George Santos, RNY, and Jamal Bowman, DNY, and some of the exchanges between the competing camps grew heated. The NYPD estimated there were about 300 pro-Trump demonstrators near the courthouse and 150 anti-Trump protesters. A scheduled appearance by Rep. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Arga, a top Trump ally, was cut short after she was drowned out by whistles that had been handed out by another Trump supporter. Shortly before noon, however, protesters were still outnumbered by the massive international news media that descended on the area around the courthouse, including reporters from Brazil, Germany, France, Finland, and Sweden. Under a 2019 New York state law that Trump as president criticized as being too soft on crime, the charges he's facing don't qualify for bail because they are non-violent offenses. Legal experts said the judge could restrict Trump's travel but is unlikely to do so because he's running for president and isn't considered a flight risk. Trump has denied any wrongdoing, calling the investigation by Bragg's office a witch hunt and accusing the dove being a racist. Trump wrote Monday on Truth Social that he didn't believe he could get a fair trial in Manhattan, where he lived for decades and made his name before moving to Florida during his presidency. The actions at the center of the investigations took place in New York, where Trump's campaign was also headquartered at the time. He also called for a new judge to proceed over the case, saying he believes Merchant is Trump-hating. He must be changed. He has also said Merchant, who presided over last year's criminal trial against the Trump Organization and its former chief financial officer, which led to multiple convictions, was handpicked by Bragg. Court officials have said that Merchant was randomly assigned to oversee the grand jury investigation and that judges who supervise such probes generally try any cases that come out of the grand jury. Thanks for watching. More Trump news coming soon. Trump AI art available.